I'm Michael Lannon, Jr. And my brothers and sisters and I have gotten together with some old friends to celebrate along with you the life of an extraordinary man. My dad. <laughs> that's my sister, Shauna. And that's Mark chomping on a burger. That's little Jennifer. And Chris. That's Leslie. And that's Josh. That's Cheryl. And of course, that's me. Did you ever sneak up on any of you when you were supposed to be studying and you weren't studying? No, we always studied, Mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only you, Mark. Tell about that. Well, one time I was, I was 10 years old. I was supposed to do my math, right? And I wasn't very good at it back then. I was trying to get the answer. And I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. So I started praying, well, God, please give me the answer. Please give me the answer. And suddenly I hear this voice. I'll give you the answer. Yeah, but I went. <laughs> if you finish your lamb chops, next time mom makes them for you. And I turned around. But, but he really had me like, like uh, I was a weird feeling because he changed his voice. Yeah. And it didn't sound like him. Um, me and Sean were being really bad at this night. <laughs> so, what were you doing? So, Dad pulled down her pants, and he was going to spank us. So I just sat there, because I knew it was going to get over sooner or later. And I knew he wasn't going to spank us, because Sean was just going to start crying. Go, Dad, you don't. So I'm just sitting there smiling, while Sean starts crying. He goes, Dad, you don't. He goes, OK, and give him one more chance. No. <laughs> so what about you? Did he give you a chance, too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, Dad would, yeah, Dad oh, would the hit the head like that. Yeah. Just smack oh, it like that. <laughs> or, or Chris and I were fighting, he'd bang our heads together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just knocked it off. Boom. I'll never forget when he scared Sean when we were up on location. Oh, we thought we Shana was just, yeah, oh, she was just a tiny little one. And uh, there were, they were doing a sequence where there was a bear, and Dad put the bear costume on and uh, went over and got right behind Sean. And when she turned around, you should have seen her expression. <laughs> she was like, that life was over. Oh my God. He grabbed a hold of her, and she's really freaked out until Dad pulled the bear hat off, and you're just you lit up like a light. Yeah. yeah. You were just oh so cute. What about the time when it was uh, Halloween, and and uh, Dad wanted to go get some food at Carlos and Pepe's, and he put his amazing. Do you remember this, Dad? And he and he put on his amazing uh, man outfit, like the Superman outfit with the cape. Oh my God. And he's got, you know, the, the big yellow cape. You know, he's got, like, this, that special shoulder thing that makes, you know, he looks, like, bigger. So then he comes in, and the, and then he said, he put his hands and said, I'm here to pick up my order. <laughs> and then it was, it was, there were was some crowded. people, there were a lot of people like, in there. He's got the cape, and oh, we're standing God. next to him, and we're like, we're not related to this man. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, we didn't want to be related to him. With the hips. No, looking around. <laughs> Oh. oh, yeah. So Sean wanted to have, remember how you wanted Daddy's shirts? So you went and you cut all the sleeves off your shirts. <laughs> Daddy helped you cut all, he, cut, he got all these brand new shirts, and Cindy goes into the drawer and finds all the sleeves cut off of these little tiny oh. shirts. Oh. Sean had the little shirts cut off like Daddy. <laughs> was a John concert. <laughs> and I think Cindy had brought a bag of cherries or something, yeah. and, and this guy kept standing out, a huge guy, just, you know, like, sit down, sit down, you know, and Dad just getting furious with him. I think Mike was over in a box, two boxes over, and then Dad was at one end. Right. And between all of us, we kept pelting this guy with cherry pits and cherries. Well, as soon as we saw Dad throwing cherries, yeah, like he's hard. Yeah, 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 so yeah. we're like pitching in here. And I also remember too that he he always came home at dinner time, and he was so tired, and he always made the time to talk to us. Oh yeah, yeah. he always. always. No matter how much pressure he was under. Yeah. yeah. We used to play uh, Three Flies Up and the mm -hmm. playing baseball. And we'd he always go to your school for events, like mm -hmm. for your piano recitals. Mm -hmm. He'd love to listen to you yeah. play, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike. You're not the chef we thought you were. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. My dad was born Eugene Orowitz in 1936 in Forest Hills, New York, but the family soon moved to Collingswood, New Jersey. His childhood was not exactly as idyllic as the Ingalls children had in Lil House, and he would draw on it in later years in movies such as Sam's Son and The Loneliest Runner. July. Huh? You told me you stopped. Now, why did you have to lie about it? Answer me! I don't know. Well, you'll think of one. I want an answer now. I just don't know. You don't know? Well, you better think of something. You better think of it fast, because I've been real easy on you, and I'm not going to do it anymore, you hear? Now, what your mother did today was right, and I'm going to see she keeps on doing it until you stop. You hear me? Till you stop. I'm talking to you. Do you hear me? It's a hereditary sleep yeah. pattern. And if he wets the bed, the chances are his father wet the bed. Now, my dad never told me he wet the bed until I was 19 years old. Now, if he'd have told me that when I was a little kid, I'd have been thrilled. To, I would have. Because when you're a little guy and you wet the bed, you don't think anybody in the world wets the bed except you. You think so you're the comes, only this one. this comes out of a personal experience. Oh, sure. I was a bedwetter. <laughs> he's looking like he's worried about the couch. No. I'm glad you can find the time to join us. All right, Goose. Come on, throw it. Hey, Horowitz! Come on! We haven't got all day. Coach, hope it didn't wreck it. I'll get it. That is one hell of a toss. Now, your, your new movie, uh, Sam Sun, is kind right. of uh, based loosely or quite a bit on your own life? Very much on, uh, on my own life. I had this weird thing when I was a kid that, uh, that, that the longer my hair got, the stronger I got. I thought uh, because that of I Samson was Samson. Or something? Yeah. Could pluck the two prime feathers from the tip of one wing. Mighty Eagle could no longer fly. The mark of his power is gone. The mark of his power? Saps. This is the mark of your power. It's your hair. If it were shorn from your head... I'd be as weak as any other man. You believe it? What? The movie, Samson. It's hard to believe in a movie about Jews when all the parts are played by Gentiles. Come on, you know what I mean. Do you believe all that about 
Samson about him getting his strength from his hair? It's in the Old Testament. It must be true. I wish he were around today. He'd make a great usher. I came out to California when I was 17 years old. I had a scholarship at the University of Southern California. I was a javelin thrower, and I I really felt that the rest of my life was planned. I'd spend four years in college and then join the service and throw the javelin in the service, maybe win the Olympics. And then I hurt my arm, and I had kind of a bad time at the school after that because I couldn't compete, and I wasn't treated quite as well as I thought I should be, and I finally quit school and got a job in a warehouse. And while I was working there, a fellow I was unloading freight cars with had a scene to do at a studio. And I thought, why not? I'll give it a shot. It was a scene from Home of the Brave, and he gave me the part of the, the young Jewish soldier. It was the, the really emotional part in the show, because he was kind of afraid of it. And it was the first time I'd ever tried anything like that, and I suddenly realized that it was a great release for me. I could cry when I was someone else and, and get a lot of things out of my system that I couldn't get out on my own. And one of the things I found out pretty early was that wanting to be an actor and getting a job were two entirely different things. I spent a lot of time in parking lots waiting for producers and agents to come out of their office because if you don't have an agent, you're not a member of SAG, you, you can't get an appointment a lot of times. So I'd wait for them in a parking lot and do the buck and wing and uh, whistle through my teeth and audition for them on the way to their cars. And finally, uh, a gentleman named Jerry Stagg gave me my first chance. I had the lead on a show called Telephone Time. of a curb. The way he turns from the light. Who is he? Perhaps an idiot peasant? Good. So good. Beautiful is the word, Casper. Beautiful. Beautiful. A person. Little. That is a child. Child? We were all little children once, like her. Not Casper. Yes, even you. No. Of course, in your darkness, how could you know that your body was growing? With what could you compare yourself? That is a flower. A rose. A rose. Beautiful. That is a thorn. Often with beauty, there is a little pain. From Decatur, Illinois, Kid Lombard. Where you been? I've been looking all over for you. Some people are waiting outside. They're gonna throw a big party for you. You hear that? You hear that? A big party. Big party for the champ. You come too, sis. No, kid. Tonight is your night. You like me? Well, oh, gosh, Amati, I, 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 I just didn't know there was a girl as pretty as you in in the whole country. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're, you're the prettiest girl I've ever seen. And, uh, oh, and, and you're so soft. <laughs> and, and you talk like a bird song. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, you smell good, too. <laughs> oh, I just love the way you talk. Hi, I'm Steve Bentley. Oh, that's too bad. 
I'm Fred of the Rangers. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry, but I I'm looking for some real action. You know, we got most of the football players. <laughs> no, 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 a different kind of action. Okay, see you around. Why not? How old were you when you first started? But was not the first show you've ever done. You. Oh, no, I did a lot of... Uh... You know, when, when I started television, there were 39 Westerns on the air when I, when I came to television. Were you in the days when Gunsmoke started, and all of them? Oh, yeah, we had Gunsmoke and uh, Wyatt Earp and uh, Have Gun, Will Travel. Yeah. Uh, one of Dead or Alive, I did the pilot for One of Dead, of Al Dead or Alive with Steve McQueen. make a secret of it. Do you know him? He's the guy that shot me. No. It's like I didn't do a very good job. You see, he admits it. Tell her why. Shut up. Tell her. Now, you and your brother cut a man in half. I told you to shut up. These guys used to used to live this stuff. <laughs> used to live it. Right. You know, a, a guy like Peter Breck from Black Saddle would go on the set of uh, Wanted Dead or Alive with Steve McQueen. Over by the coffee machine. <laughs> they tell me you're pretty fast. <laughs> McQueen would look up. Fast enough. <laughs> Commissary, one o'clock. <laughs> A pilot for television that was a real stinker. Oh, yes. I mean, a bomb. I've never talked about it. I, 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 I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> you made a show that you thought was great. I made a show. I made a show years ago before Bonanza. It was a half hour show, and I played a character named Johnny Risk. Johnny Risk? That's a typical television <laughs> name. Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> um. <laughs> Did this ever see the light of television at all? No. What do you have against these people? Nothing. They merely have uh, property that we should have had in the first place. And they worked hard for it. They fought freezing temperatures, hunger, wild animals. They've got wives and children. Well, what about the rest of us? We've gone through a lot up in this miserable country. Anyway, please, spare me the sermon. You talk to me about sermons. Well, it seems to me a day never went by when I was a kid that you weren't lecturing me on on decency and integrity and morality. And I'm happy to see that my lectures bore fruit. Nobody can deny that you're a decent, well-liked, and completely respectable human being. Have you volunteered to go on a mission with me? It's my one chance. I'm going to prove to you and through you to the entire crew that I'm not yellow. In my book, you're still a murdering, yellow-gutted louse. I said I'd go around you. Or through you. chilling savagery. Nothing you've ever conceived packs such a spine-tingling jolt. This high school boy, a teenage werewolf, a constant threat of claw-ripping attack to everyone. That string of parts was about to lead into the part that would make my father famous, Little Joe and Bonanza. And by the time his career was over, he had written 107 hours, directed 208, produced 330, and starred in over 800 hours of television productions. Yep, that's a fact. Ponderosa! Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba! 
We're not a one to settle up and run by man. Any one of us starts a little fight, knows he can trust on me. I've got a flair for women everywhere. Bonanza! Bonanza! And when I call on Lady Gown at all, she's gonna welcome me. Too much noise, can't sleep. I'm not afraid of any pretty maid. Bonanza! Bonanza! When I give a kiss to any pretty miss, she'll learn a lot from me. One four 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 one. Sweet guarantee. One four 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 one.